We're Danny and Kate, and this is Paco. After five years living in Barcelona, enjoying city life, the beach, and the slopes, it's time for a new adventure. Follow our journey as we build our very own tiny house and start a mortgage-free homestead in the mountains in Spain. Welcome to Smithsdale Farm. Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode at Smithsdale Farm. Today it might sound a little bit echoey and that's because we've come to stay with some family at a beautiful Airbnb that's on one of the mountains close by in the Bayes Ebra region. So we thought we'd give you a little tour of this gorgeous off-grid property and also we're going to be getting on with some really exciting things on the land including planting our first ever tree. So keep watching for that. The house sleeps four people, has two bedrooms, one bathroom, a big kitchen dining area and a beautiful lounge to relax into. The house runs mainly on solar power. All of the lighting and all of the electricity runs directly off the solar panel system. It also has these amazing skylights. The biggest of one is in this gorgeous atrium, which light the whole property. Of course, you do need some additional lighting in the evening, but in the daytime, this is totally sufficient to be able to do all of the cooking and reading and working and anything else that you might wanna do here. So since it's off grid, you need to be a little bit careful about how you're spending your energy. This just comes down to a couple of little rules. Make sure that you turn off the lights when you're not in the rooms and make sure that you're conserving the water where possible. But other than that, it's so simple to live off grid. There's a big water holding tank which feeds into the house, but it's not drinkable water. It's there for having showers, doing the washing up and the cleaning, things like that. There's a gas boiler and the kitchen hobs run on gas too. And there's a gorgeous wood burner which helps you stay warm. But enough about talking about somebody else's property, let's go get back to ours. Today we're going to be planting our first tree, which is a lemon tree, which has been very kindly bought for us by Danny's dad and partner, so thank you so much to John and Trish for that. And we're also going to be propagating some of our fig trees using a technique called air layering. So this is the, the first tree we've planted on the land, it's a lemon tree. We had a little look of the different steps we should be taking um, to plant a lemon tree. So we, it was a, a wide hole, not a deep hole. Um, and then at the bottom we placed uh, sticks, a bit like hugel culture, to give it something to break down in the future. Um, but they recommended not to put um, fertilizer down or that sort of thing to start off with because in the first year it needs to grow roots, not leaves. And if you put um, fertilizer down, you're more likely to get uh, leaf growth and, and uh, branch growth. Whereas if you don't put fertilizer, you're more likely to put uh, root growth down and you're gonna get a much more stable plant or um, embedded plant. And then, so we've covered, covered the ground with um, just some twigs or a bit of um, 
a bit of mulching kind of um, and that's just so the ground doesn't dry out so much and then we've stabilized it with some pegs because they don't typically like like a lot of wind it's um something we have a lot of here we don't really have much choice um, about the amount of wind but we thought if we stabilized it a little bit during its its first year of life we should get a, a nice strong tree and um, yeah hopefully some lemons we actually chose to plant in this spot particularly because this is where we've actually been putting our humanure. So we have been composting it here for, I think the last lot that we put here was about um, six to nine months ago. Um, and so normally you would leave it to compost for around a year, um, but since it's buried in the ground, it's composted very, very well. We couldn't see any traces of anything as we were digging it up. And so this is the perfect space to be planting something like a tree. So when you compost your own humanure, uh, people are very scared about using it. What is it that you can use it for? Where can you use it as compost, etc.? Um, the advisory kind of line on it is that normally you wouldn't use it for something which is going to bear fruit um, directly close to the soil. So for example, things like courgettes, peppers, tomatoes, you wouldn't really use humanure for that. You would use normal compost but when it comes to things like trees where the fruit is actually uh, much further away on a trunk and branch that means that it's totally safe to use it in that way. At the end of last year we got some more of these IBCs delivered and one of the little jobs that we need to do is actually make some space for them to kind of sit and then we're going to fill them up with water from the cisterna. A few videos ago you saw us get these delivered. We were advised not to put it on rocks, um, which is what we've done before because the, the pallet, once it's got like a ton of water inside, it's pretty heavy. You can break the pallet. So what we've done is we've made a base for three of these. We've got some tubing up to the cisterna and we're just siphoning off um, siphoning off the water from inside the cisterna into these, which means next time, next time it rains, we've got a spare thousand, two thousand liters worth of space in the cisterna to, to collect the rainwater. So this is one of the IBCs we filled last spring and we filled it up with water and we've not really used it so it's been sat there for about a year and um, we've covered it with this kind of shade cloth it's not really shade cloth but we've we've used it as such and there's been no algae growth over the last year on the inside it doesn't look green or anything else so that's worked quite well and it's a very cheap option i think this was like five ten euros or something like that so it was a very very cheap option for us and then the, the ones over here we'll probably build some kind of frame it's a bit more permanent either out of wood or light steel frame something like that and then with a hard roof we can also collect the rainwater over that three square meters so just to give us a bit of extra rain collection area is always nice also this water is not for drinking we're taking it out of the cisterna um, and we're storing it here so we've got more rain catchment in the rain catchment from the cisterna but we'll just be watering plants or cleaning stuff on the land, like nothing to do with food, nothing to do with drinking. We know it's not clean, we're not going to drink it. <laughs> um, the water we do drink is from a well in town and then we put that through a filter um, in the house before we use it. So we're not drinking the cisterna water yet. Cisterna might be okay to drink from in the future once we've emptied it, once we've cleaned it and everything's been maintained a bit better than it is at the moment. In one of our previous videos, we told you a little bit about air layering and that that was something that we wanted to try with some of our trees. Now, we don't have many citrus trees or anything like that, so what we're going to do is try it with this fig tree. It's big, it's next to the house, it grows in a really odd shape, so we're going to give it a go and see if we can propagate some baby fig trees from this one. So we, um, we're watching Eco and Beyond, or Make Do Grow, I think they're now called. And they were talking about the, the wasp that fertilizes the fig tree or makes the figs grow. 
um, is good for stopping the, the little fly that leaves marks on your olives. So we want to have more figs around the land anyway, because we like figs. Um, but also if it's got a beneficial interaction with the olive trees to, to cause less pests, um, that's also a good thing. So we've been doing some air layering. Um, and this is a process where you kind of remove the bark from a, from a branch and surround it with soil in a dark environment. And then the tree um, naturally puts roots into that dark environment. And then once the roots are formed in a ball, we can cut that and then plant it as a totally new tree. I think somebody wants to be in on this shot. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a process we've seen several people doing, but specifically Prosperous in Spain, he's been doing quite a lot with his figs. I think he's also done lemons and mandarins. So we re-watched his videos just to see what, um, what his latest updates were. And yeah, so we'll see how that goes. With the tree being such an odd shape, we've decided to try and do one of these parts that's going up. Um, normally you wouldn't choose to go on a downwards facing branch because essentially what happens is if we wanted to turn this into a tree, actually once you air layered here and then kind of inverted that, your tree would be growing downwards, which is not what you want. So we've tried to choose places where we've got healthy growth, like here, and that one there and another just through the back but then we're going to give this one a go and see seeing as this is kind of a sideways growing rather than a downward growing we'll see whether we can recoup a little bit of this part that we're actually going to have to chop off at some point final step was just to put this foil around it like this. That's going to help keep a bit of the moisture inside. It's also going to help protect it from the sunlight and hopefully make those roots grow nice and strong. So now the only thing that we've got to do is wait a couple of weeks. We're just locking up everything, ready to go back to Barcelona. We've had a really, really lovely weekend sharing our land with some of our lovely family. And it's been so nice to see their reaction to the place that we've bought and the place that we hopefully intend to live in the future. We're going to go and enjoy a little bit of a walk by the river, have some lunch and then set back to the city. If you've made it all the way to the end, then we really hope that you've enjoyed this video. We know that this isn't the kind of updates that everybody's waiting for on the cabin, but they will come really, really soon, we promise. We're just getting ready to kick off with some super exciting projects, including the roof and the cladding around the outside and windows and doors and all of that super exciting stuff is coming really, really soon. And we can't wait to share all of that with you. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions for us, please do leave them in the comments down below. For now, we wish you a great day, whatever you're doing, and we hope everybody's well, and we will see you on the next one.